Hello, Guardians. Welcome back to our series of CISSP scenario-based questions. We have already covered questions for Domain 1 and Domain 2. If you have not watched them, we have provided the link in description. You can also click the I button to browse through the playlist. We would appreciate your support to like the video, subscribe our channel, and share in community. This will help us reach out to other fellow professionals and partner in their CISSP certification journey. In this video, we will focus on Domain 3, Security Architecture and Engineering. In today's digital landscape, where cyber threats evolve rapidly, the need for robust, secure information systems is paramount. Security is no longer an afterthought. It must be woven into the fabric of system design, development, and operation. See ISSP Domain. 3 equips professionals with the knowledge and tools to do just that. Let us have quick overview of Domain 3. CISSP. Domain 3. Security Architecture and Engineering concentrates on the principles, practices, and methodologies used to design, build, and maintain secure information systems. It emphasizes integrating security into the core aspects of system architecture and engineering processes. The objectives of this domain include understanding security models and frameworks, system architecture and design, security evaluation models, security engineering processes, security capability maturity models, security architectures, designs, and solution elements, vulnerability management, embedded security, cryptography and cryptographic systems, site and facility design for security. Domain 3 is highly relevant in the field of information security because it addresses the critical aspect of securing systems and infrastructure from the ground up. It ensures that information systems are designed and maintained with a focus on security, resilience, and the ability to withstand evolving cyber threats. The domain covers a wide range of topics, making it challenging to master all the concepts comprehensively. Keeping up with the evolving landscape of security models, frameworks, and technologies can be demanding. Implementing security measures, especially cultural and organizational changes, can be challenging within an organization. CISSP candidates are expected to demonstrate a deep understanding of security models, frameworks, and architectural principles, be proficient in risk assessment, vulnerability management, and security testing, possess extensive knowledge of cryptographic techniques and their practical application, have the ability to design and maintain secure systems, facilities, and networks, Understand how to integrate security practices into the software development lifecycle. Recognize the significance of physical security measures for protecting assets. Domain 3 plays a vital role in shaping C, ISP certified professionals who can effectively contribute to the design, construction, and maintenance of secure information systems, an essential skill set in today's digital age. Domain 3 is crucial in understanding how to design, build, and maintain secure systems and applications. Let us go through some of the key concepts covered in this domain. Security Models and Frameworks Security Models Understand various security models like the bell Lapidula model and Biba model, which help in structuring security policies. Security Frameworks Familiarize yourself with security frameworks such as ISO IEC 27001, NIST Cybersecurity Framework, and CIS Controls, which provide guidance for organizing and managing security efforts. System Architecture and Design Learn how to design and implement secure system architectures. This involves selecting the appropriate hardware, software, and network components while considering security requirements. Security evaluation models. Explore security evaluation models like Common Criteria, CC, and Evaluation Assurance Levels, EALs, to assess the security capabilities of systems and products. Security engineering processes. Understand the processes involved in security engineering, including risk assessment, security testing, and code reviews. 
These processes are crucial for identifying and mitigating security vulnerabilities. Security Capability Maturity Models Familiarize yourself with maturity models, like the Capability Maturity Model Integration, CMMI, to measure an organization's capability to manage and improve its security processes. Security architectures, designs, and solution elements. Study various security architectures, designs, and elements, such as secure network architectures, data protection mechanisms, and secure coding practices. Vulnerability Management Learn how to identify and manage vulnerabilities effectively. This includes vulnerability assessment, patch management, and remediation strategies. Embedded security in the design of systems and devices. Understand the importance of incorporating security features into the design of systems, devices, and applications from the beginning to ensure they are inherently secure. Cryptography and cryptographic systems. Delve into the world of cryptography, covering encryption, decryption, digital signatures, hashing, and key management. Site and facility design for security. Explore physical security considerations for data centers, server rooms, and facilities, including access controls, environmental controls, and backup power. Security of virtualization and cloud computing. Understand the unique security challenges posed by virtualization and cloud computing environments and the strategies to mitigate these risks. Security in the development life cycle. Explore secure software development practices, including secure coding, threat modeling, and incorporating security into the software development life cycle. Operation and maintenance of security systems. Learn how to operate and maintain security systems effectively, including continuous monitoring, incident response, and system updates. Physical security. Understand the importance of physical security measures, such as access control, surveillance, environmental controls, and secure facility design to protect against unauthorized access to physical assets. These key concepts in CISSP Domain 3. Form the foundation for building secure systems, applications, and networks. Understanding and applying these concepts is critical for professionals in the field of information security and for passing the CISP exam. Let us now move to our practice questions. You are a security consultant for a multinational corporation. The company is implementing a new, cloud-based infrastructure to support its global operations. They are concerned about the security of their data in transit and data at rest. Which of the following security mechanisms would best address these concerns in the cloud environment? The options are Option A, implementing AES 25B6 encryption for data at rest and using IPsec for data in transit. Option B, deploying a strong firewall at the perimeter and using SSL for data in transit. Option C, utilizing biometric authentication for data at rest and deploying a VPN for data in transit. Option D, implementing a SIEM system for data at rest and using RSA encryption for data in transit. In this scenario, the company is concerned about the security of data both in transit, while it's being transmitted, and at rest, when it's stored. Let's evaluate each option. Option A covers both concerns effectively. As AES-256 encryption is a strong choice for protecting data at rest, and IPsec is a commonly used protocol for securing data in transit. In option B, while a strong firewall at the perimeter is important for network security, SSL, Secure Sockets Layer, primarily secures data in transit, but doesn't address data at rest. This option doesn't fully address both concerns. For option C, biometric authentication is typically used for user access control and doesn't directly address data at rest security. A VPN, Virtual Private Network, is used for securing data in transit, which is a good choice for that aspect. 
However, data at rest is not adequately addressed in this option. In option D, AS, IE, M system is used for security monitoring and event management, primarily for data at rest. RSA encryption is suitable for securing data in transit. This option also addresses both concerns effectively. Post-evaluation of each option, we can now say option A is the best choice as it provides strong encryption for data at rest and secure transmission of data in transit, effectively addressing the company's concerns about data security in the cloud environment. Options B, C, and D each have their merits, but do not cover both aspects as comprehensively as option A. Let us now move on to our next question. You are the Chief Information Security Officer, CSO, of a large financial institution. The organization is undergoing a significant digital transformation and a new cloud-based customer relationship management, CRM system, has been implemented to improve customer service. As part of your responsibilities, you need to ensure that the organization's sensitive customer data is adequately protected. Which of the following security concepts is most relevant in this scenario? The options are Option A, data availability. Option B, data classification. Option C, data retention. Option D, data encryption. In this scenario, the organization is implementing a new cloud-based CRM system that will likely handle sensitive customer data. As the CSO, your primary concern should be ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of this sensitive data. Let us now evaluate each option. In option A. While data availability is an essential aspect of information security, in this scenario, Confidentiality is of higher concern because the organization is dealing with sensitive customer data. Ensuring the availability of data is important, but it's not the primary focus here. Option B talks about data classification, which involves categorizing data based on its sensitivity and value. While data classification is a fundamental concept, it doesn't directly address the primary concern of protecting sensitive customer data in this scenario. In option C, data retention policies dictate how long data should be stored and when it should be securely disposed of. While data retention is important, it is not the primary focus in this scenario, which is primarily concerned with data protection in the new CRM system. Option D, talks about data encryption, which is the process of converting data into a secure format to prevent unauthorized access. In the context of handling sensitive customer data in a cloud-based CRM system, data encryption is a crucial security measure. It helps ensure the confidentiality of the data, which is the primary concern in this scenario. Implementing strong data encryption mechanisms in the new CRM system will help protect sensitive customer data from unauthorized access, ensuring its confidentiality. While other concepts like data classification, data retention, and data availability are essential in an overall security strategy, in this specific scenario, data encryption is the most relevant and critical measure to address the primary concern, and hence option D is the correct answer. Let us now move on to our next question. You are the Chief Information Security Officer, CISO, for a large financial institution. Your organization uses a multi-tier application architecture with a web front end, application servers, and a database back end. You have recently discovered a vulnerability in the application server software that could potentially lead to unauthorized access and data breaches. You need to decide on the best approach to mitigate this vulnerability. What should you do? The options are option A, implement network-based intrusion detection systems to monitor and detect any attacks on the application server. Option B, 
patch the vulnerability as soon as possible, followed by thorough testing to ensure the fix does not introduce new issues. Option C, isolate the application server from the network to prevent any potential attacks while you assess the impact. Option D, deploy a web application firewall to filter and block any malicious traffic targeting the application server. Here's the reasoning behind each option. A. Implementing Network-Based Intrusion Detection Systems IDS, is a good security practice, but it does not directly address the identified vulnerability. IDS can help detect attacks, but it doesn't prevent them. Additionally, it's better to fix the vulnerability itself. B. Patching. The vulnerability is the most appropriate immediate action. Vulnerabilities should be remediated as quickly as possible to reduce the risk of exploitation. However, it's essential to follow up with thorough testing to ensure the patch doesn't introduce new vulnerabilities or disrupt the application's functionality. C. Isolating the application server from the network might protect it from potential attacks but it's an extreme measure and may disrupt legitimate business operations. It's better to patch the vulnerability while keeping the system operational. D, deploying a web application firewall, WAF, is a valuable security control, but it should not be the primary response to a known and exploitable vulnerability. While a WAF can help mitigate attacks, it's not a substitute for fixing the underlying vulnerability. In this scenario, the best course of action is to address the root cause of the vulnerability by patching it promptly, followed by thorough testing to ensure that the fix does not introduce new security issues. This approach minimizes the risk of exploitation while maintaining the system's functionality. Hence, the correct answer is option B. Are you able to understand the scenario and align with the explanation? Let us know your thoughts in comment section below. Before moving to the next question, we would appreciate your support to like and share this video and subscribe our channel. This will help us to reach out to other aspirants also. Let us now move on to our next question. You are the Chief Information Security Officer, CESO, of a multinational corporation. Your organization has recently adopted a bring your own device, BYOD policy to allow employees to use their personal smartphones and tablets for work-related tasks. To ensure the security of corporate data on these devices, you've implemented Mobile Device Management MDM, software. Which of the following best describes the primary security benefit of MDM in this BYOD scenario? The options are Option A MDM ensures device encryption and secure boot processes. Option B, MDM provides strong authentication for user access. Option C, MDM enables remote wipe and data loss prevention. Option D, MDM offers network segmentation and firewall protection. Let us now evaluate the options. In option A, while MDM can enforce encryption on devices, its primary role in a BYOD scenario is not about ensuring device encryption or secure boot processes. These features are part of device security, but they are not the primary focus of MDM. For option B, MDM may enforce strong authentication for accessing corporate resources, but this is not its primary benefit. Strong authentication is more related to identity and access management IAM, systems. Option C is the primary security benefit of MDM in a BYOD scenario. MDM allows organizations to remotely wipe corporate data from a device if it is lost, stolen, or the employee leaves the organization. It also helps prevent data loss by enforcing policies regarding data sharing and storage on mobile devices. In option D, while MDM can enforce network access controls, including segmentation and firewall rules, this is not its primary purpose. Network security features are typically provided by other security technologies, 
such as firewalls and intrusion detection systems. In summary, in a BYOD scenario, MDM's primary role is to enable remote wipe and data loss prevention, ensuring that corporate data on personal devices can be protected and managed effectively. The primary security benefit of mobile device management, MDM, in a BYOD scenario is option C. MDM enables remote wipe and data loss prevention, which will the correct answer. Let us now move on to our next question. You are the security manager for a financial institution that deals with highly sensitive customer financial data. Your organization is implementing a new security model to ensure the confidentiality and integrity of this data. The primary concern is to prevent unauthorized access and data tampering. Which security model would be most suitable for your organization's needs? The options are option A, BIBA model, option B, Clark Wilson model, option C, Bell LaPadula model, option D, Brewer Nash model. Let us try to understand application of each security model in the given scenario. Option A, BIBA model. The BIBA model primarily focuses on data integrity rather than confidentiality. It enforces rules like no write up, no read down to prevent data corruption, but does not address confidentiality concerns as a primary objective. Option B, Clark Wilson model. The Clark Wilson model is designed to address data integrity and separation of duties. It enforces well-formed transaction rules to ensure data consistency and integrity. This model is particularly suitable when preventing unauthorized data. Tampering is a primary concern, making it a good fit for financial institutions handling sensitive financial data. Option C, Bell Lepidula model. The Bell Lepidula model is primarily concerned with data confidentiality. It enforces mandatory access controls to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive information, but does not focus on data integrity to the same extent as the Clark Wilson model. Option D, Brewer Nash. Model the Brewer Nash model, also known as the Brewer Nash Lattice model, is a model for distributed systems that focuses on availability and consistency in distributed environments. It is not primarily designed for ensuring confidentiality and data integrity in the context of sensitive financial data. In summary, the Optium B, Clark Wilson model is the most suitable choice when the primary concern is to prevent unauthorized access and data, tampering in a financial institution dealing with sensitive customer financial data, as it is specifically designed to address data integrity and separation of duties. Let us now move on to our next question. You are the information security manager for a financial institution. The organization is planning to implement end-to-end -end encryption for all customer transactions on its online banking platform. What cryptographic mechanism should you prioritize for this scenario? The options are, Option A, symmetric encryption. Option B, asymmetric encryption. Option C, hash functions. Option D, digital signatures. Let us try to define and explain each cryptographic mechanism and find the correct answer. Option A, symmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption is a cryptographic technique where the same key is used for both encryption and decryption. Symmetric encryption is efficient for securing the confidentiality of data, but it may not be the best choice for this scenario. Since the question mentions end-to-end -end encryption, which typically involves secure communication between two parties, for example, customer and bank, Managing symmetric keys securely for multiple transactions can be challenging. Option B, 
Asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption uses a pair of keys, a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. Asymmetric encryption is well suited for this scenario. It allows customers to encrypt data with the bank's public key, ensuring that only the bank's private key can decrypt the information. This mechanism provides confidentiality and data integrity while simplifying key management. Option C, hash functions. Hash functions are one-way functions that take input data and produce a fixed size hash value, typically used for data integrity verification. Hash functions are not suitable for encrypting and decrypting customer transactions. While they are valuable for data integrity, they do not provide the necessary confidentiality required for securing customer financial data. Option D. Digital signatures. Digital signatures are cryptographic techniques that provide authentication and data integrity by allowing the sender to sign a message with their private key. Digital signatures are important for verifying the authenticity and integrity of messages or transactions, but they are not used for end-to-end -end encryption. They complement encryption by ensuring the origin of the data and its integrity during transit. Given the scenario's emphasis on securing customer transactions and protecting financial data, while ensuring confidentiality and integrity, the cryptographic mechanism that should be prioritized is option B, asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption allows secure communication between customers and the bank by using the bank's public key for encryption and its private key for decryption, ensuring data confidentiality and integrity during transit. If you find this video useful, do share in the community. Subscribe to InfoSec Guardian's channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get new and updates on information security.